years ago when I was maybe 10, 11, 12, um, I was at Christmas time very, very caught up in buying gifts for everyone. If I'd known you for two days before Christmas, you were going to get a gift. And the list was long and money was scarce because it was the pocket money earned from doing chores around the house. So one Christmas, I asked my older brother if he would mind chipping in and then the presents would come from both of us. And he was quick to say no because he had other ideas of what to use his money for. Plus, he added, he was going to write his name on the tags of my presents. <laughs> so why would he need to give me any money? So having known him for 10 years, I knew that I had to somehow figure a way to make this gift hijacking plot you know, unsuccessful. So with my list and my money, I went to Woolworth and bought my little gifts, wrapped them, tagged them, hid them, until early Christmas morning, just before we were leaving for the service, I put them on the Christmas tree. We all got in the car, went to church, went to grandma's for brunch, came back, and we were getting ready to open the gifts, and lo and behold, to mark from Maxine and Donald, <laughs> to add Joyce from Maxine and Donald, and so on. I was bewildered, confused, a little angry, but sort of amused and admired. I have no idea how he did it, but it's a Christmas memory that I still have. We have all kinds of Christmas memories, often caught up in gift getting and gift given, giving. And in our story that we just heard of Jesus' birth from Luke, we hear about the best gift of all. Luke tells us this very familiar story. We hear the same story every year at Christmas Eve. The story that Luke tells is simple. We probably could recite parts of it, especially if we've watched Charlie Brown's Christmas. <laughs> we know of the young pregnant teenager who gives birth to this firstborn child. We know of the shepherds in the field being visited by angels. We know of their haste to go visit this newborn baby. We know that they leave the stable going back to the hills, rejoicing in what they had seen. And yet every time we hear it, we are caught up in it in this story that's so, so simple, so memorable, and yet so awesome. And perhaps it is because we know somehow deep in our hearts that the story is about God's gift to us. You see, the angels proclaimed that this was going to happen for all people. For unto you is born this day, the story says. It is for me, it is for you, it is for all people. And it's not just a story that 
takes place 2,000 years ago, it's powerful enough to remember it as a historical event. But it's a story that takes place in our lives and in our hearts today if we would accept this gift of a savior. God gives this child to us each and every day because God loves us. God loves us no matter who we are. It is for all people in a time when we are in distress, in a time when we may be lonely, in a time when we may be hurting, in a time when we may be confused, we have received a gift. It doesn't matter who you are. The lonely shepherds, the simple people from Bethlehem moving from Nazareth, coming to Bethlehem, alien residents, God gives this gift. No matter how unworthy you feel, the gift is yours, the gift is mine, the gift is for all people, wherever they are, whatever their circumstance may be. And perhaps, like the shepherds, we are called then to make time to receive this gift. Perhaps like the innkeeper, we need to open our hearts and find a little space, a room for this child in our lives. And we perhaps then must see the tag that comes with this special gift that God has given us. The tag that says, this gift is to Maxine from God, to you from God, to your neighbor from God. Maybe we are called then, like the shepherds, to go out, to go out and tell everyone about this gift. And perhaps, like my brother, to add their names to the tag. Because it is good news of great joy. For unto us, to you and to me, is born today, this day, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.